This week, Sydney-based tech company Envirosuite proved itself to be another Australian success story. It listed on the AXS, and the Australian company earlier in the week won a major contract to provide the US space agency NASA with a software platform that collects, processes, and visualizes data from NASA's low sonic boom flight tests. Now, this is going to enable NASA and members of the testing team to review low sonic booms that are produced by the aircraft together with community response in actual real time. And joining us today is Jason Cooper to talk about it. Morning, Jason. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Now, a contract with NASA, it sounds very impressive. How did that come about? Yeah, look, it is. It's uh, what more do you need to be validated as a technology leader than to be engaged? So NASA put out an RFP uh, and they went out to the wider audience and there was a large multi-billion dollar defence contractors who were already established with NASA going uh, up against us. We formed a consortium with a company called HMMH, who's an acoustics leader in North America. And, and they partnered with us. We have a long-standing relationship with them. And there was a few other members of that team. And the way that we won is each team member brought something unique to this. And we're, so as a consortium, we're able to bring a fairly compelling offer. Now, how did this consortium come about, Jason? Did you reach out? Did they reach out? Was it something that you'd worked before together? Yeah, so we have had uh, many years of work with HMMH, but they did come to us in the starting point, knowing that our software capabilities were seen as industry leaders. So that was uh, an easy one. We had got that existing relationship. Other members of the consortium, though, were invited to, to come in uh, via HMMH. Now, what's EnviroSuite's normal uh, business model? What, what does EnviroSuite normally do before you're involved with NASA? Uh, so we're, we've got three key parts. So one, aviation, which is what we're um, probably known for, certainly from a split of revenue. It's our largest contributing uh, segment. So that we are number one globally around the world within what we call commercial aviation airports. So that's your Sydney airports and your Melbourne airports, uh, those types. So the Heathrow, Los Angeles. We do noise monitoring and we detect planes coming into land and the noise that that gives off. And so it's that expertise it was actually translated into this agreement. So we have 163 airports around the world that is using this technology today. Another part of our business is what we call our Omnis platform. Omnis is Latin for everything. And so basically this platform can detect any environmental intelligence parameters, so noise, vibration, air quality, water quality, odor, bring it into this ingestion and then come up with predictive modeling of what's gonna happen. And the last part, is our water business. And so that is our startup, and that's looking at AI, so artificial intelligence, and deterministic modeling. As far as Australia goes, how many jobs and what is this con contract worth for EnviroSuite? From a jobs perspective, because we're a software platform, we've been able to largely use our current workforce. So we actually have got a um, software development team here in Australia and in America. So it will be a joint effort between the American and the Australian group working. We are a global business already. So we don't see this adding jobs per se. This is actually leveraging the technology platform that we've already got today. Uh, from a, a contract perspective, so this is $750,000 in its first instance. But this is an eight-year arrangement. And so we would expect that this project will grow over the coming years as long as the project meets its deliverables. And at the end of the day, you know, NASA's end goal here is to make supersonic travel uh, available at the domestic point. And there's a key point here that I wanted to, to, to really touch on. Now, NASA is incredibly ambitious in what they're wanting to do. So if you think about the Concorde flying from... Paris and, and London across to JFK. The reason that it was able to do it is because it was flying over water. It wasn't able to fly over land. What they're wanting to do, and the unique part here, is enable that supersonic travel over land in that domestic part of the market. So the first phase that we're being contracted for is the establishment here of setting up the systems, the processes, making the technology work. The second phase, which is really critical to this, is going to be the impact of people on the ground. So the likes of you and me and how we are impacted by a jet flying greater than the speed of sound over your head. Had the Concorde done it, we would be having windows shattered and, and severe disruption. 
their ambition here is it's a low thumb. So this is quite groundbreaking. So the to answer your question, the first engagement is around setting up the systems and the processes. The next phase will then be the testing part. And it would have to be a huge feather in the cap for Australia's uh, Brains Trust and our reputation overseas to have EnviroSuite associated with NASA, wouldn't it, Jason? Look, absolutely. A lot of our customers have already reached out to us just to sort of pat on the back. But people in the know, this is a really, really significant win. Uh, you know, we know that NASA put rockets and people into space, right? They are now wanting to go through the next groundbreaking change. Uh, we are incredibly excited to be part of this consortium with HMMH um, and to be working on this groundbreaking project. Very, very exciting. Yeah. So certainly from our staff as well. You know, they've been incredibly excited to be part of this journey. Uh, any, do you have any kids, Jason? I do. I have three kids. I, I hope you're telling them that Dad's basically an astronaut now and they should go to school <laughs> bragging. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll be leveraging this for many years to come. Um, and so the opportunities that flow on from this, has the government reached out at all with any form of support or suggestions? Did they want to jump on the bandwagon and claim some credit? <laughs> Look, they haven't yet. We certainly would welcome any uh, any discussion from the government on that. Look, I think it's I think it does come back to leveraging Australian technology and having that global mindset. We are very much a global business. A third of our revenue comes from Australia, so that's it's great that you know two thirds of the revenue is outside. We we uh, we do all of our innovation right, and, and this is the historical part of the company has come from Australia. So this is our scientists, this is our R&D. And so it shows that if you execute on a plan and you have the, you know, the right technology differentiation, the world is your oyster or space is your oyster. All right, what a great way to finish, Jason. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. <laughs>